Before I do start this video, make sure to use my TCG player affiliate down below if you're looking for any of these singles that I talk about today. Also, this channel is sponsored by Arcane Fortress. If you're looking for the best deck boxes around, make sure to use my link down below in the description to check them out. One other way you can support the channel is by becoming a patron. There are some great benefits of being a patron to the channel, such as giveaways, deck advice, and more when you do join. Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Devin coming back at you with another video today on Pub Stomp MTG. So I'm continuing upgrading some of the pre-cons that are coming out for Modern Horizon 3, but today I wanted to upgrade the new Tricky Terrain pre-con deck that's the semicolor one that focuses on lands, and this one is a powerhouse. This one probably had the most value out of all the pre-cons, and there's definitely a lot of staples as far as lands go, for sure, for future references. So in this pre-con, there are two commanders that you can choose from. There's first Omo, Queen of Vesuva. Let's first read what she does, so for two and a Simic Hybrid color cost. Legendary Creature Shapeshifter Noble with a 1-5 body. Whenever she enters the battlefield or attacks, put an everything counter onto each up to one target land and up to one target creature. So basically kind of like a Titan effect, if you will, whenever it attacks or enters the battlefield. Each land with an everything counter on it is every land type in addition to its other types, and each non-land creature with an everything counter on it is every creature type. So basically this is just everything is everything, so that's why it's called an everything counter, which is pretty neat. I do like this for originality. There's a lot of ways we could absolutely abuse that ability of just putting everything counters on different creatures and different lands. But there is a secondary commander I do want to highlight too, Joyti Moag Agent. So for two green and a blue, it's a legendary creature, Elemental. It's a 2-4 body. When it does enter the battlefield, create a 1-1 green forest stride creature token for each time you cast your commander from the commands on this game. And at the beginning of combat, land creatures you control get plus X plus X until end of turn where X is Joyti's power. So basically everything will get plus 2 plus 2 unless you have some way of buffing up Joyti. If I had to pick between the two commanders, I feel like Omo is pretty powerful in the way of putting everything counters on different creatures and different lands. There's a lot of different sub themes in this deck that you'll notice that it'll definitely take advantage of like deserts or different creature types. But Jody is a great overrun commander, especially if you have a lot of land creatures on the battlefield. So either one is pretty good. I'm going to focus more on Omo in this deck upgrade. And usually what this upgrade does consist of is focusing on the new cards. I usually uh, highlight about five cards that are great in the deck. Then I'll focus on the whole deck list and show you some of my cuts. And then later on, I'll show you some of the upgrades that I feel like would make this uh, deck a little bit better. So without further ado, let's get it started. Out of all the commander decks that I've seen so far, this one has probably the most staple lands I've ever seen come to Magic the Gathering, at least for commander specific cards. I did want to highlight a few lands that are going to be excellent in any kind of deck, Town Gates of Madara, Planar Nexus, and Horizon of Progress. So let's take a first look at Town Gates of Madara. This is excellent because when it does enter the battlefield, target creature phases out, so this could be used offensively and defensively. You could use this against opponents of creature when it's attacking you, or you could use it defensively if someone tries to remove one of your creatures you could just put it onto the battlefield because you could pay four mana put Talon Gates of Madara from your hand onto the battlefield so basically an instant speed protection for one of your creatures. Planar Nexus is just an extra copy of one of those kind of non-basic land types so that's good there specifically if you want to use it for a desert deck. And Horizon of Progress one of my favorite lands of this entire deck is basically just a horizon land and could put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. Another excellent land choice that will really only go into blue color combination decks is Sunken Palace. This does enter the battlefield tap, so that is the one downside. It does tap for a blue mana, but it does have a great ability paying one and a blue and tapping it. Exile seven cards from your graveyard, add a blue mana. When you spend this mana to cast a spell or activate an ability, copy that ability or spell. You may choose new targets for that copy. So what's pretty neat about this is whenever you cast any kind of spell, it doesn't matter about instant or sorcery. If you have a creature that you want to copy, you could easily do so by paying that mana and also exiling seven cards from your graveyard. So basically like an escape cost in a weird way. Or if there's a really powerful ability that you also want to copy, you could just pay that mana and also tap it as well. So this one is pretty powerful. I do like it for what it does, especially in those blue decks where you want to copy a lot of different things. But let's move on to a creature I'm mostly excited about, and that's Rampant Fragantua. The reason why I'm so excited about this is the fact that it'll get buffed up for each person who loses the game. But by itself, as a 3 mana trample 3-3 three, three body, isn't too shabby. But it could easily scale in the game. If somebody does lose the game, it'll become a 13-13. If another 
other player lost the game, it'll become a 23-23. And if you're somehow in a six person game, this is gonna get exponentially huge depending on how much people are knocked out. But in a weird way, it's like a rampant growth. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may mill that many cards, put any number of land cards from them onto the battlefield tapped. This can be very good in a reanimator strategy because all you really want is big creatures in your graveyard. You don't really want any lands in your graveyard because you want them on the battlefield. That way, rampant for Gantua, when it does attack and when it does connect to an opponent, you can't just put those lands onto the battlefield and the rest in the graveyard. I think this is a very good card and possibly a really good card in Grolnock. But let's move on to another card that I do like in this set. I do like Copy Land for two and a blue. You may have Copy Land enter the battlefield as a copy of any land on the battlefield, except that it's a champion in addition to its other types. So it's very similar to the Copy Artifact, Copy Enchantment kind of effect. In a weird way, this does ramp you because it does enter the battlefield as the chosen land. But what makes this very good is it could really scale with different type of opponents. So somebody does have a guy's cradle well now you get a guy's cradle but that's really the main only example i mean there's a couple others like field of the dead that you could copy that this could be really extremely good with and the last new card i do want to focus on is pretty powerful and that's march of the Valis veil for two and a blue choose non-basic land type for each land you control that's the type it becomes a copy of target creature you control until end of turn and gains haste until end of turn so this could be very powerful with omo specifically because you're putting everything counters on specific lands and so they have every non-basic land type so if you have everything counters on like five lands and you have like two deserts on the battlefield you could just name deserts with march of velis veil vale, and then just have it become a copy of a big giant creature you have on the battlefield let's just say a rampant frogantula and somebody's out on the battlefield so you have like a bunch of 13 13 swinging for everybody plus not to mention this does have flashbacks so if you want to get one more use out of it you totally can so now that i've talked about the new cards of the deck i did want to focus on the deck itself and talk about some of the reprints and talk about some of the cuts that i would take away from this deck because there's honestly a lot of chaffed and pre-con products anyways. All right, so looking at the deck list, there's a lot of really good reprints. The first one I do want to point out is Apex Devastator. This is an excellent choice because it's a great closer in the game. Just having that ability of Cascade, 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 and wait for it, Cascade again. This is extremely powerful, and you could probably get it out pretty fast with the amount of ramp you do have in this deck. Uro Titan of Nature's Wrath is another excellent reprint that will just ramp you further ahead, and if you do put it onto the battlefield when it's escaped, you could just swing in, put some more lands on the battlefield, gain life, draw cards it does everything for you dry day of the elysian grove is also another excellent choice mainly because you can just play additional lands on your turns and lands are basically every type that you could choose to tap for mana essentially so your mana fix for the rest of the game propaganda is essentially just dissuading your opponents from attacking you because they have to pay two mana every for every creature attacking you mana reflection is another great option just doubling the number of mana that you can produce weirdly enough pongify is a three dollar card i didn't think it was a three dollar card but here we are Avenger of Zendikar is also another welcome reprint. It's three dollars, but this I feel like for the longest time was like thirteen to fifteen dollars at a time. But I feel like they keep reprinting it. Ulvenwald Hydra is another excellent choice. Just entering the battlefield, searching your library for any land card, doesn't matter what kind of land, you could just put it onto the battlefield. You have a lot of landfall synergies like Rampaging Bailoths and also Scoot Swarm, which. I don't know if you know, but I absolutely hate Scoot Swarm, but it is there. And there is a total of 44 lands, so obviously you could cut that down if you want to. I mean, this is a lands deck if you really want to focus on that specifically. However, I usually like to go to 38 on my high mana bases, so if you want to take out six lands, you totally can. I also forgot to mention Dark Depths, what a really good card. I am not counting uh, taking out the lands, I'm going to focus on some other cards that you can take out, but definitely you could reduce the mana base if you wanted to. But let's focus on some of the cards that you can take out. There's a bunch of them that I feel like are kind of unnecessary. I mean, they, they can work with your game plan, but I feel like in a way you have better options. For example, Eureka Moment, Harmonize. Drawing three cards for four mana is not the greatest. There's a lot of other ways we could draw cards that are better than this. Summary Dismissal is another one you don't necessarily need. It's four mana. I mean, it's a great effect, but it's kind of unnecessary. Urban Evolution is another one you can take out if you want to. Skullwinder is another one I don't think is very good in the deck because this does help your opponents. I don't really like helping my opponents as much unless I'm playing a group hug deck, so this one you don't necessarily need. Looking at other cuts, Fog Bank is one that you really don't need, in my opinion. Like, it's just... Uh, O2, Defender Flying, Preventing All Combat Damage, you don't need it. You, you seriously don't. If you get rid of Poison Dart Frog, I will find you and find your house and I don't know what I'll go from there, but just don't get rid of Poison Dart Frog. We don't even want to get to that point. Seder Wayfinder is okay. 
I don't think it's necessary. You don't need it. There's a lot of things that you can take out in a general sense. Uh, I feel like in a way you could just kind of make this deck however you want as a good stuff deck. This is what really it is. I mean, it does focus on some counter synergies, making everything counters on different creatures. And with definitely a landfall theme with all those landfall creatures. So you could take advantage of that even further with a couple of different options that I'll show you later on. But this deck list, uh, as you can see, it's pretty pricey at first. Looking at it, it's uh, $212. That is pre-release pricing. Technically, we're not at release on the product. So some of these can swing up or down depending on how much play they do see. Also, I forgot to mention Yabamai Cradle of Growth. That's another excellent reprint. So again, there's a lot of reprints in here. Some things that you could definitely take out and I feel like overall it's a very strong deck list that is a very good foundation for you to make a really good deck of course there can be upgrades though and that's what I'll get into so as you can see there is a lot of focus on the everything counters that your commander does produce so let's help our commanders game plan out by using cards like nesting grounds goldberry and avon courier as you can see from each of these cards they have that focus of moving one counter from target permanent you control to another target permanent these are very good especially in those situations if some Somebody tries to remove like one creature you have with an everything counter you could just tap nesting grounds and just put it onto a land because everything counters even though you move them from like a permanent from like a creature to a land they're still going to have that effect with your commander out on the battlefield out of these options though goldberry is one of the stronger ones because it focuses on moving counters shifting them back and forth from goldberry to a different permanent and if you do you draw a card but the rest of these are pretty good nesting grounds is a land that you could use at any time by tapping it even courier is an attack trick Trigger, and you can put another everything counter on another permanent if you want to because when a creature has an everything counter on it it'll have every creature type so why not take advantage of those types with herald of hoofbeats and nimble trap finder since all our creatures will be every creature type other knights you control have horsemanship so that means all your creatures will have horsemanship as long as they have an everything counter and nibble trap finder is essentially a coastal piracy as long as you have a full party on the battlefield but it is cheaper by two mana though i will say something very good about omo though is the fact that she can act as a great party leader just so that you could have a full party and you could get some kind of bonus with nibble trap finder or other examples another exciting one that's really good on its own is coma the cosmo serpent this just takes control of most games because of its abilities. This will make 3-3 serpent tokens on the battlefield at each upkeep and most importantly sacrifice another serpent, choose one. So this works perfectly with any creature we do have on the battlefield if they do have an everything counter on them. This will also include them to be a serpent. So really it's just extra protection for your coma. It does have that ability of tapping target permanent. Its activated abilities can't be activated this turn or coma the cosmos serpent does getting indestructible until in a turn. So either way it's going to be a great bonus for us to really take control of the game. Because our commander does have an enter the battlefield trigger, let's focus on that. Let's focus on using Displacer Kin and Thassa Deep Dwelling. Whenever we cast a non-creature spell, Displacer Kin will constantly blink our commander so that we can put an everything counter on a land and a creature. Thassa Deep Dwelling does have a great floor at the beginning of your end step. You just blink another creature you control like your commander. So Displacer Kin definitely has a higher ceiling depending on how much spells you do cast. But these are just consistent ways we could just put everything counters on specific creatures and lands that we control just in case if we want to get some kind of buff off of them another great option i would like to highlight is awaken the woods mainly because you create x1 with green forest dried land creature tokens this actually synergizes very well as far as putting counters on our creatures or lands because there are land and creature types so whenever our commander does attack we have that ability of putting an everything counter on a creature so we could put it on that dryad but because that dryad is also a land we could also put another counter on a land that we control so another dryad as well but if you do want to put a fun win con in the deck mazes end is going to be a fun one mainly because you could just put as much gates on the battlefield as you can because of course they will have everything counters and of course if you do have 10 or more gates with different names you win the game so that's going to be pretty easy to do because there's a lot of different names of different lands you do have on the battlefield but with all that said that's going to do it for me guys thank you guys so much for coming by and watching this video on upgrading the tricky terrain pre-con product let me know down below in the comments do you plan on getting this pre-con yourself and do you plan on upgrading it i'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions about this deck and if there's any cards that i did miss make sure to comment with them down below so with all that said make sure to like share and subscribe to the channel with out of the way thank you for stomping by